time to surrender. What's the context here? Well, this was last year, September. These leaflets, they were dropped maybe a day before the fighting began. You see, the guerrillas there, they'd found themselves a new leader. Charismatic, ex-military. For him, this was no time to surrender. Far from it. In fact, he used that time to rally his people, encourage them to resist, build defenses. Meanwhile, the army was setting up for a major offensive. The attack on Oreo Castro, it was no secret. Of course, after the leaflet dropped, IDAP started pull out of the town. So the little I do know, well, that brings us back to the brother, the one who disappeared. His name was Alexis. He volunteered to build a barricade. Town was his home after all. So, these leaflets, they were a warning to the town. Yeah, they confirmed the offensive. The government was concerned about civilian casualties. Don't sound too surprised. So, NATO's message, do you think it was getting through? I mean, according to the laws of armed conflict, that's the principle of precaution, right? Sure. Maybe. Or maybe they were just sick of all the extra paperwork. Father Georgiopoulos, and he was actually very uh, good about the whole thing. How so? Something about rich men and camels. Help me out with some context here. This barricade. I mean, it was crude, right? A gap between two outcrops of rock, natural bottleneck. The guerrillas hoped to block the road by jamming it with vehicles. What would you do? As for the vehicles in the barricade, the commission actually linked the plates to a number of locals. Of course, several were still missing after the incident, so the investigation made some assumptions. Hey, just a thought. You remember the earthquakes back then? Yes, they were quite frequent. Well, I'd have at all concerned about that. Oh, yeah. Any kind of disaster relief on top of what we were dealing with, it would have just about finished us off completely.
these vehicles? I suppose all of them were taken without consent. Well, yeah, given the circumstances. The owners couldn't exactly refuse. Right, but that's the thing. Never mind theft being illegal. The laws of armed conflict prohibit such actions. Alexis built the barricade, what then? Did he stay inside the town? No. That's where the story gets more complicated. The barricade itself was later chained up and set on fire by someone else. I don't know quite who. Alexis, he headed west to lay mines. Anti-tank mines were already in the ground. If there's no pull fuse, and so long as they've not been stacked, they aren't too hard to remove. But Alexis, although he didn't use anti-handling devices, he did create a hybrid minefield. AT mines, mixed with APs. That's it, yeah. He put anti-personnel mines around the anti-tank ones, made clearance all that much harder. These mines, how did they get hold of them? They got them when the government's outposts fell into guerrilla hands. Bounding mines. A type that leaps up a meter in the air before exploding. Nasty stuff. Hell, nowadays they're even made with plastic casing to throw off older types of mine detector. Mm, lovely. Oh yeah. Just do yourself a favor. Don't look up bouncing Betty injuries online. And they're still there? Mm-hmm. No, not for long. We're setting up our demining drones as we speak. You know, thinking about it, even if we had a record of where Alexis's mines were, it may not do much good. No? I thought minefield maps were a key part of your work. Most folks don't realize, but landmines, they don't stay put. Heavy rain, landslides, keeping a map current ain't so simple. And with all the earthquakes in this region, there's little chance they'd all be in the same place. I don't know, maybe just gallows humor, but we've got an expression for that. Landmines have legs. Alexis proved to be quite the combat engineer. He placed the mines exactly as he'd been shown. So, moving on, where did Alexis go next? He took a quad bike up to the castle behind the town. I see what you're getting at. Yeah, Geneva Conventions, cultural objects, I think. The barricade. There wasn't any way around it then. From the road? No, well, not unless you cut through the compound. Maybe a technical question. Go ahead. In these situations, do those involved commonly record the locations of minefields? That's a tough one. Take this situation, for example. I'm convinced Alexis would have made a record. It's his home, after all. But do we have access to that information? No. 
And that's a problem. Things, information, people, landmines, they get lost in the fog of war. But that's the thing about landmines. Lost or not, they stick around. They wait to be found. Do you feel these preparations made a difference? In the short term? I do, yeah. The barricade held. The government's tanks were knocked out on the road. And in the long term? I'd, uh, I'd go on, but as you may have heard, it's getting kind of loud here. <laughs> By the sounds of it, you've got your hands full. Uh, this will only take a minute. Be right back. Do you happen to remember it well? The airstrike, I mean. Yeah. October 13th. Cluster bomb. Town was shook up pretty bad. The army just wasn't able to capture the place. And Colonel Arcanteros, he did not tolerate failure. So he asked foreign powers to intervene. Come in, break the guerrillas' resolve. Right. And the evidence in the commission report, doesn't it point to CSAT? Yeah. But... Truth can be the first casualty of war. Sure, but didn't somebody witness them in action? From a distance, yeah. Though he wasn't exactly what you'd call reliable. The guy was a goat herd. Barely spoke any English. That was not in the report I read. It never is. Still, he did say they came down by parachute, and that at least was corroborated by multiple sources. چیزی می‌بینم. سلاح ایسا. 600 متر. سمت دو هشت پنج. These operatives, then. They moved in on the castle. Yeah. Must have been a fire team, at least. اقب نشینی! The man who claimed to have seen all of this, is there anything else you can tell me about him? Not much. Like I say, simple goat herd. Lived alone, small stone shed just north of the castle. at this time. They were uh, an embedded training team, ETT. Officially, they were just there to oversee counterinsurgency operations. And unofficially? <laughs> Anyone's guess. A lot of different rumors. Black sites, car bombs, false flags.
درگیری مسلسل چی؟ هفتاد و پنج متر جلوتر درگیری سرباز هفتاد و پنج متر در جلو درگیری مرد هفتاد و پنج متر در جلو درگیری مسلسل چی؟ درگیری مرد آماده یه شلیک هم آماده یه شلیک هم The gorillas were taken out one by one درگیری مسلسل چی؟ یک صد متر در جلو درگیری سرباز ها Then, silence. If we're to believe the goat herd, they then set up a position on the battlements, moved to a vantage point on the castle's outer wall. What about chap? Okay, according to my notes, several targets were identified from afar, Presumably by these special forces at the castle. Once they had a handle on what was what, they called it in. A jet approached from the east and dropped a single bomb. The positions in the town were then destroyed, but the church and IDAP's camps were left untouched. Does that match up with events as they were given to you? Yeah, though to manage a guided strike like that, they must have had thermal imaging. درخواست حمله هوایی به موقعیت فرستاده شد تمام دشمن دیده شد هدف ناشناس نیم کیلومتر سمت دو جکسفت A lot of uncontrolled variables. 
One of our doctors was out on the front line with medical supplies. Wait, he wasn't at the church? No, he was out in the open. By all accounts, the town just seemed to explode. Buildings were burning for days. And this spotter, he just disappeared? Yeah. Last seen leaving the castle, heading west. Let's talk about Idap's doctor. You said he was on his way to the church. Did he make it there? No. He, uh, he lost his life. Killed trying to save others. I got the shooting! I can certainly say the devastation was severe. Dozens killed, combatants and non-combatants alike. The guerrillas, they were in total disarray. Many fled, retreating to the mountains. And IDAP, we did what we could, but there were so many wounded. So many we'd never be able to identify. Nathan? Uh, no, I'm, I'm still here. I just need to grab something real quick. This will only take a sec. I understand that CSAT denied any involvement. Yeah, who knows? Maybe with good reason. Oh? Like, I don't know. There were shell casings found at the castle. NATO mill spec. Okay, so then either they were supplying the guerrillas or... Or they were there. Maybe trying to win back the government support. Maybe... What? I don't know. Tell me more about Marcos. Poor guy. He always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He'd made it through the airstrike, but only to get caught up in the assault that followed right after. There were still guerrillas in the town, even after the strike. Mm-hmm. But Oreo Castro, it wasn't just a town. It had become a symbol of the resistance. It was important for both sides, and government forces were making their final push. Alexis had made it out. But his brother? Like I say, Marcos was always shit on the wall. The guy had been waiting at his brother's place. Marcos had been wounded, caught in the leg by shrapnel. I see. Do you think...
government sent a truck to our camp. Soldiers searched the civilians for hidden weapons. But they didn't find any. No, and we'd already checked. It's vital our camps are weapon-free spaces, safe havens. Hmm. And Marcus, he must have made it through then. Yeah, just about. We talked a few times after. I don't know, he seemed different. I can imagine why. And what did he do after? Hard to tell, but like I said, he kept looking for his brother. Of course. And Marcus, his body, is still there in the churchyard? Yeah. To think he survived all that just to return to the same spot less than a year later. <laughs>